Hello and welcome to Tech Deals AMD RX Vega 64 Liquid Cooled Full Review 33 Benchmark 6 Card Comparison. I am going to be comparing the RX Vega 64 against the two air cooled RX Vega cards and four different NVIDIA cards, the 1070 through the 1080 Ti. Now those benchmark charts will be later in the video. Before we get there, I'm gonna talk about the pros and cons of this. I'm gonna talk about temperature, fan speed, noise, and what my recommendations are, then we'll get to the benchmarks. RX Vega 64 Liquid Cooled is the current top of the line from AMD. If you want the best card AMD makes, you're looking at it, but it is not inexpensive. On the day I filmed this video, $700, but for $700, you get a very quick card. The liquid cooler and the higher clock speed does make the liquid cooled card faster than the air cooled Vega 64, which is what you can see right here. You can see the blower fan. There's no blower fan because liquid cooled. It's also much, much quieter, up to 20 decibels quieter. It is not a small difference. If noise is a concern, the liquid cooled card is currently running about $150 more than the air cooled card. It is worth the money. If you're thinking of spending $500, $550 on the air cooled, I actually think the liquid cooled is a better deal for most people. Much less noise, more performance, and frankly, a nicer overall experience. There's also the Vega 56. Now, I've previously reviewed that, and a link to that will be down in the description below, but you don't have to see that for the benchmark results. I've copied them here as well. The Vega 56 does have lower clock speeds, and it has fewer actual shaders than the Vega 64 cards do. It's also less expensive, starting at about $400. Do I recommend it? Well, for people who really need free sync support or need GPU compute support, it is an option. I do think for most people a GTX 1070, at least for gaming, is a better choice, as I covered in that review, but this is an option for some people. And of course, if you want more information on that, go check out the video. But if you are looking for the best of the best, if you want low noise, top of the line performance, but you want high end compute and you want free sync support, I think the Vega 64 liquid cooled is where you should be looking. Now I understand it's expensive and I know a lot of people are gonna say, wait a minute, $700, can't you buy a 1080 Ti for that? Isn't a 1080 Ti faster? Yes, it is. And if all you care about is the frames per dollar spent, the GTX 1080 Ti is a better deal but it's an NVIDIA card. Some people, for various reasons, want AMD. If you want AMD, this is what you're currently looking at for top of the line. When you look at the benchmark results, you simply have to decide, are you okay to pay that price to get almost kind of sort of 1080 Ti performance? Not really, it's just slightly over 1080, but do you want the AMD that badly? Same thing with the 56. If compute is important to you, non-gaming performance, that's a separate factor, but for gaming performance, Really, the NVIDIA cards are where most people should look. I mentioned the noise and temperature difference before. Let me show you what it sounds and looks like when these cards are running versus the liquid cooled card. Here you can see I have the sound meter where it's 65 decibels. I'll let you listen as I zoom in. As I zoom back out, I'm going to show you the real-time numbers here. The fan is turning at almost 2400 RPM, and the card is running just over 60 degrees Celsius, here at least in this benchmark in Rise of the Tomb Raider. Notice the clock speed? It's about 1400 megahertz. You're going to see a much higher clock speed in just a minute from the Vega 64 liquid cooled. Now here we are on the liquid cooled. This is actually the exhaust side. The air is blowing on to the microphone. Notice that the sound is 20 decibels lower than it was on the Vega 56 air cooled. Please note that the sound on the Vega 56 air cooled is stock speeds. This is also stock speeds. The temperature is noticeably cooler. We're down in the high 40s. The fan is turning much slower. And since it's a larger 120 millimeter fan instead of a blower fan, look how little noise that makes. That is directly in the exhaust flow of that fan. I put it on both sides. If you need or want a Vega card, the liquid cool really is that much quieter absolutely a superior experience in all respects except perhaps price notice the clock speed almost 1700 megahertz there a dramatic improvement in the performance as well as the noise
Do not adjust your set. That is what the Vega 56 sounds like when the fan is turned up to 100%. Now that's not normal operating to be sure, but if you want an idea of just how bad it really can get, that is turning it over 4,700 RPM. Now you will not reach that speed in normal operations. In fact, I've actually turned the volume down here or you couldn't even hear my voice. But basically the blower fans on the Vega cards are terrible. The liquid cooler is much better. Yes, there really is that much difference between the cards. That's why I filmed it and used a sound meter because frankly, just telling you isn't the same thing as showing you. The short, short version is if gaming is your primary interest, I wouldn't buy any of these. Now, please note, I do like the AMD RX 580. That is a good card. It's not too hot. It's not loud. I'm actually very happy with the RX 580. These for gaming? No, they're too expensive. They're too hot. They consume too much electricity and they're not fast enough. If you're just gaming and you want a high-end gaming card, get something from the NVIDIA line. Frankly, a 1070, anything up to a 1080 Ti is a good value for the money, relatively speaking, at this performance level. If compute and non-gaming applications are important to you, the RX Vega 64 liquid card is the one I would buy, even over the much less expensive Vega 56. Temperature, noise, performance, this card is noticeably more uh, powerful in terms of performance than the Vega 56 due to its higher clock speeds and higher shader counts. Let's not forget the noise. The noise difference, even at standard speeds, this is 20 decibels louder than this is. It's 40 decibels louder when you turn the fan up to 100% to get max performance out of it. They're not even close in the sound department. Now this still puts out a lot of heat, but it's expelled out of the radiator and out of your case. And so long as you have air conditioning in the room that you're operating, it's tolerable. If you look behind me, you will see a Threadripper box. I am going to do a build with the liquid cooled Vega 64 in a full Threadripper system. That is a video editing and content creation machine, not a gaming machine. And so actually this makes sense from a compute standpoint. The reason I wouldn't put these in there is noise. When you're doing content creation, the last thing you want is a noisy computer. These are loud, so they're not options, but I'll put this in and I'll test it out on Threadripper. I may also put a 1080 Ti in there, which is the same price roughly, and see how well it does in content creation tasks when I get that built, and we'll have to see which one I end up keeping after that's done. Okay, enough of that, on with the benchmarks. The first benchmark is the 3D Mark 3D Graphics Benchmark. This is an absolutely pure test of DirectX 11 and DirectX 12 graphics performance. The very far left test time spy is DirectX 12, and then the other three are DirectX 11 at decreasing resolutions, Firestrike 4K, Firestrike Extreme, which is 1440p, and then Firestrike, which is 1080p. You can see the left three, the red, orange, yellow, and green are the 1070, 1070 Ti, 1080, and 1080 Ti graphics cards. Then we have the Vega 56 and the Vega 64 liquid cooled. Notice that the Vega 64 liquid cooled is almost exactly the same performance across the board as the GTX 1080. It is worth noting that that is not going to be the case in games and other applications because there's optimizations for various architectures. Sometimes Vega wins, sometimes the GTX 1080 wins. But the reality is across the board, the Vega 64 liquid cooled, which is faster than a Vega 64 air cooled, is roughly the equal of the 1080. Next up, we have the VR Mark Virtual Reality Benchmark. Are you interested in VR gaming on an HTC Vive or an Oculus Rift? This is for you. The test on the left, the orange room, are current games on the current VR hardware. Now, all of these cards pass current VR standards. You can play any of the current games on the current VR headsets just fine with any card. You, of course, do have a little bit more performance the higher up the graph you go, and that always helps you with future games. The blue room on the right is for future VR systems, future VR headsets, future VR games. Now, none of these cards actually meet the standards for the blue room, although the 1080 Ti actually does come pretty close, but it falls a bit short, about 15% short of the minimums there. You can see here that while the 3D Mark uh, benchmarks had the 1080 and the Vega 64 liquid cooled neck and neck, they are not here. On the orange room, current, 
12,765 points for the 1080 versus 11,729 points for the Vega 64. Now, it looks more impressive on the chart than it really is. The reality is the percentage difference there is fairly minor. Both of these cards will run current VR games over 100 frames per second. Next up, we have the Uni Engine series of benchmarks Heaven, Valley, and Superposition. Heaven and Valley, a DirectX 11, Superposition, brand new DirectX 12. Notice in Superposition, the GTX 1080 and the Vega 64 are much closer together, very, very close. In the older DirectX 11 tests, it's not even a contest. The GTX 1080 crushes it. Same three benchmarks, but this time the score. Each of these benchmarks provides both a frame rate and a score. I'm reporting both because many other reviewers only provide one or the other, and this gives you something to compare. All of these benchmarks are free to download. By all means, download them, run them on your current computer, higher number, more performance. That brings us to our first game. In this case, this is a DirectX 12 title, and Vega loves it. Notice that the Vega 64 is noticeably faster than a GTX 1080. No, it does not compete with the 1080 Ti, but it's not too far off, especially in the higher resolutions. It's much better, especially up at 4K. Of course, even at 4K, they're all below 60 frames per second. I don't know that I'd want to play this at 41 frames per second average at 4K, but at least it's only 9 frames per second below the 1080 Ti. At lower resolutions, of course, it's going to be faster, but then again, so are all of them. Next up, we have Far Cry Primal. Very smooth across the board. This shows that the GTX 1080 and Vega 64 are neck and neck. Basically, some things are faster on one, some are faster on the other. I said that earlier. This simply proves the point. Taking a look at For Honor, it's pretty much the same story. 1080 and Vega 64 liquid cooled are neck and neck. Although I would like to point out how tall those green bars really are. If you've got $700 for a graphics card and you want to play games, do I really need to tell you which one of these you should buy? Yeah. Now, if you want to spend less, as I said before, for $400, buy a GTX 1070. They're quiet, they're cool running, they sip the power, and they provide great performance. Ghost Recon Wildlands, one of my favorite games of 2017. I've beaten this game. I've live streamed this game. In fact, I won it on a live stream. Now, let me say I've got a lot of time into playing this game, and these numbers exemplify the importance of buying lots of graphics card if you want to play the latest and greatest AAA games. Please note that if you have a 144Hz 1080p monitor, a 100 hertz 1440p monitor or a 60 hertz 4k monitor the only graphics card on the market that will run ghost recon wildlands at high detail at anywhere close to those frame rates is the gtx 1080 ti now of course if you're playing at 1440p at 60 frames per second any of these cards will do that but if you want high frame rates high refresh rates basically it's 1080 ti or bust just a quick reminder, I am not running at ultra detail. I'm running at high. Ghost Recon Wildlands does have a very high, and it has an ultra. At 1440p at ultra detail, will a GTX 1080 Ti do 60 frames per second? Yes, it will. In fact, it'll do in the 70s. Will any of the other cards do over 60 frames per second? Not really, actually. They will at 1080p, but at 1440p, if you want to run at ultra detail, you really have to buy a GTX 1080 Ti for averages over 60 frames per second. Minimums will actually still be below 60. This game is crushing on your graphics card. Grand Theft Auto V. This chart requires disclaimers because the game engine gets all squirrely when you get above 150 frames per second. If you look at the minimums, you'll notice that the GTX 1080 has a lower minimum at 1080p resolution than the 1070 does. That is because the game engine gets extremely choppy. You actually really need to turn the detail up to ultra, turn on super sampling, go up to a higher resolution. With this much graphics power, it really does kind of break. The best way to see the performance difference is the 4K numbers. You are not reading this chart wrong. The GTX 1080 Ti is 50% faster than the Vega 64 in GTA 5. Please note, GTA 5 is known to A, love Intel processors, and B, love NVIDIA cards. So this is more this game than it is anything else. But it does demonstrate that there are circumstances where there are monstrous performance differences. 
Even with just the GTX 1080, it's still a 14% performance difference, which is quite a bit for cards that synthetically are identical. Rainbow Six Siege runs great on any of these cards. If you have a 1440p 144Hz monitor, a GTX 1070 is actually all you need, at least for average frame rates. For minimums, if you get a 1080 Ti, you can maintain a minimum of 140, well, three frames per second, but any of the Vegas work fine, as well as the lower end 1070s and 1080s. Rise of the Tomb Raider, same story, different game, what more is there to say? That brings us to our last game, The Division, another game that I've completely beaten and had way too much fun with. Now, this game actually performs pretty well on mid-level hardware. Notice at 1440p, we are completely playable even on the 400R GTX 1070 or the 400R RX Vega 56. Like Ghost Recon Wildlands, this game also has an ultra detail setting, but this was tested at high. If you want to play at 4K, this game is a perfect example of why it's GTX 1080 Ti or bust. Not just for the averages, look at the minimums. You go from the 20s to the 40s on the minimums by going from a 1080 to a 1080 Ti. I kid you not, I've said it before, I'll say it again. If 4K gaming is in your future, so is a 1080 Ti, at least if you want to play high-end AAA games at high detail. And there you have it, 33 benchmarks tested on six different cards. The Vega 56 is competitive in the performance department versus the 1070 and the 1070 Ti, but not in the sound and heat department. If you don't care and you want AMD, by all means, it's competitive for the performance. But if you care about the sound, heat, or power consumption, skip it and buy an NVIDIA card. As far as the Vega 64 liquid cooled, it is very competitive with the GTX 1080. It even gives the 1080 Ti a run for its money, mm, sort of occasionally sometimes, but not really. It's really a 1080 competitor, but it's $700. The 1080s can be found for $500. So from a price to performance standpoint, it doesn't make any sense. It is, however, just as quiet as the 1080s are. If you want a silent car, if you want a car that makes no noise, that expels the heat out of your case, that runs really well with good performance, it does the job. If compute or free sync is that important to you, yes, it's worth buying. Now, as far as the 64, it simply wasn't included because I had nothing but problems with this card. It runs too hot. It runs too loud. It's difficult to make stable. You have to play around with the card. You have to play around with the voltages skip it for all reasons whatsoever. I simply would not buy this, and it's rare that I give a do not recommend it to anything on my channel. But I hate to say it, Vega 64 air-cooled, not recommended for anyone for any reason. Either the 56 or the 64 liquid. This just really shouldn't exist as far as I'm concerned or buy one of the NVIDIA cards. It's all up to you. Like this video if you like it. Share it with your friends if you loved it. Remember to subscribe to my channel with that big, huge red button directly below. Questions and comments in the comment section. And as always, check out the links in the video description. Links to all the cards tested here will be down there to both Amazon and Newegg. If you like the content that I make, if you appreciate what I do, please consider using those links when you buy. I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time.